all of the gorgeous, gorgeous girlies are reading uh, Court of Thorns and Roses, and I feel a little left out. Oh, girl, Sarah J. Mass, you gotta pay for your crimes against humanity. This is not cool. Hey, Amelia. Let me explain something for you. I do not love fantasy books. I haven't really read a lot of the fantasy genre. I'm open to enjoying fantasy. However, I have not read a fantasy book that I have enjoyed. That being said, all of the gorgeous, gorgeous girlies are reading Sarah J. Mass right now. And I do identify as a gorgeous, gorgeous girly. Two problems. One, as I previously mentioned, I don't love fantasy, and so I'm not really keen on, like, spending a bunch of money on fantasy books. Two, there's, like, so many books in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and also each book is, like, so long. I will not be dedicating that much time to this. When I turned 11 years old, my sister bought me the first three books in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass, and I never read them. I do not like fantasy. I have never liked fantasy, but I kept them, and I have now read the first Throne of Glass book. I'm gonna get something out of the way right off the bat. I did not like this. So much happened, but also like nothing happened. It was so boring. I don't think I'm gonna read the rest of this series, but like feel free to peer pressure me because if you really, really want me to, maybe for you I will, but not on my own volition. One thing in particular I strongly dislike about fantasy, everyone has silly little names that don't like make phonetic sense to me. If a name is spelled a certain way, I feel like it should make sense. And in this book, there is a pronunciation guide. The pronunciation guide is at the end of the book. I read the entire book pronouncing the names wrong. Why would you put a pronunciation guide at the end? Open to the map, next page, pronunciation guide. Easy. I probably wouldn't read it. At least it would be there. If I pronounce names wrong, I don't care. So therefore you should also not care. So the plot. We open on Endovir, which is assault mines, which is where they send like criminals and rebels and whatever. When you break the law, you get sentenced to, like, indentured servitude, to slavery. Our main character, Selena Sardothian. Now, this is one of the names that maybe it is spelled phonetically, but maybe I'm just stupid. But in my mind, I was calling her Selena. Selena is the Adderlin assassin, one of the most notorious assassins in, like, the whole wide world, except for the fact that most of the world doesn't know that she is the assassin. One day, these guys show up, and they, like, take her. The guy who shows up is K.L. Westfall, captain of the guard. K.L. is another name. It's spelled C-H-A-O-L. I, the entire time, pronounced it Chol. Coal? Not k -all. That was nowhere in my brain. So k -all, the captain of the guard, he comes in. He, like, takes her and he walks her through the prison. He takes her into this room. And in this room is Dorian... Havlar, Havillard, Hav Halivard? Havillard, Dorian Havillard, the crown prince of Aurelia, which is where they live. See, this is why I don't like fantasy. Why are all of these names so complicated? Why do I feel like people are gonna be mad if I pronounce it wrong? So he's the crown prince. Selena's in there and she's like, man, fuck this guy. He put me in prison. She decides she's not gonna bow down to him, which is really girl boss. If she were bound for the gallows, she would most certainly not spend the last moments of her life groveling in submission. This other little guy grabs her and like throws her onto the ground. So she's like lying there on the ground and she's like, he's kind of gorgeous. Like, are you kidding me? Yet there was something in his eyes, strikingly blue, the color of the waters of the southern countries and the way they contrasted with his raven black hair that made her pause. He was achingly handsome and couldn't have been older than 20. What? Girl, you don't know him. I have no patience for that. Dorian is like, I don't quite comprehend why you'd force someone to bow when the purpose of the gesture is to display allegiance and respect. It is clear that you respect me, Duke Parrington, but it is a bit unnecessary to put such effort into forcing Selena Sardothian to have the same opinion. Immediately, I know I don't like him. I hate him. Already don't like this man. You may be wondering, why is she here? Why is she talking to the crown prince? And why is the crown prince here in the salt mines? Well, let me tell you. The king of... What is this country that we're in called? Is Aurelia the continent? And so are these states or different countries? Wait a second. So the map. It's the map of Aurelia. And there's all these little dotted lines which either denote states or countries. So is the king the king of all of it? Or is he the king of just Ad Adderlin? Oh dear. I fear that I did not understand this book at all. Anyway, 
the king of either Adarlan or Aurelia is holding a competition to get his assassin, something called the King's Champion. All of the dukes and nobility from the court are bringing, like, a person in to compete to become the king's champion. That's unclear to me why, what is the incentive for this nobility to participate in this? Dorian decides he wants the Adderlin assassin to be his champion, so he gets on his little horse with his friend, aka K.L. Westfall, the captain of the guard, and a bunch of other guards, and they like adventure over to the salt mines to pick up Selena, and she is like, and why would I do that? K.L. is like, well, you want to spend the rest of your life here? And she's like, that is such a fair point, you're absolutely right. If she wins this contest, she is going to have to be serving the king for six years, and Miss Selena is like, absolutely not, I'm not into that she says i will serve him for three years and dorian is like four years final offer and she's like deal so selena only has to serve the king for four years if she wins the contest they start off on their adventure rifthold rifthold these are not real words i feel so stupid the palace is a two-week journey away from endovir the salt mines kaol and selena are like flirting a little bit maybe how well born are you well enough his chin lifted almost imperceptibly higher. Duke? No. Lord? He didn't reply and she smiled slowly. Lord K.L. Westfall. She fanned herself with a hand. How the court ladies must fawn over you. I think this is meant to be flirting, but I have no idea. Legitimately, I have no idea. Selena is 18 and K.L. I hate that, is 22. And then later on, we learned that Dorian is, I think, 19. And I know that this is like a different universe and it's not here a 22 year old should absolutely not be romantically involved with an 18 year old like technically it's legal four years it's not that big of an age difference but from 18 to 22 like a lot of life goes on there there's like a lot of living that is happening between those two ages personally it feels a little icky if we're gonna have like a love interaction set up between these two characters although we're like 20 pages in. I may be way off, but it feels icky. In order to get to the palace from the salt mines, they have to go through the enchanted forest. Apparently, this forest is magical but also magic doesn't exist but it did but not anymore but there's still magic in the forest but no there's not oakwald used to be full of fairies and fae the king of adderlin had outlawed it all magic fae fairies and removed any trace so thoroughly that even those who had magic in their blood almost believed that it never really existed selena herself being one of them i believe that the king is only the king of adderlin which makes me think that maybe aurelia is like the continent like no North America is the continent, Canada is the country, you know? So Selena has magic in her blood. So they keep going on their silly little adventure for about two weeks. They travel into the city, they go to the castle. It's a castle made of glass. The main part of the castle is made out of stone. And then like the new addition is made out of glass. And Selena's a bit afraid of heights, so she wants to stay in the stone castle. Is it important? No, not really. Why am I spending a lot of time on it? I don't know. Don't ask questions. Dorian is a bit of a womanizer. He's a bit of a a man whore. And all of these girlies are like trying to catch his eye. He's never serious with any of them. Selena has a makeover because she is emaciated from being in the salt mines. She's like kind of dirty and gross. She's just been traveling for two weeks. So they clean her up. So she gets dressed up in this super fancy dress for some reason, like way fancy. While she's in this super fancy, super gaudy dress, There's like a meeting called to officially start the competition with the king and all the whatevers. And this is where we meet all of the other contestants, the other competitors. Selena is not competing as herself because that would give away the element of surprise. And like I said at the beginning, nobody really knows who the Adarlin assassin is They don't know that it's like this young woman. Someone comes up with this great idea that Selena should compete under an alias. To everyone in the castle, Dorian said, your name is Lillian Gordana. Your mother is dead and your father is a wealthy merchant from Belhaven. You are the sole heir to his fortune. However, you have a dark secret. You spend your nights as a jewel thief. Most everyone in the palace knows her as Lillian, except for three people. 
Kaol, Dorian, and her like private handmaid, Philippa. Everyone else thinks her name is Lillian and she's like some rando jewel thief. So at this meeting, it's like the official start of the competition. This is where we meet the rest of the competitors, except for we only really meet one important one. And his name is Kane. Kane is this big scary dude. He's Duke Parrington's champion. Kane is also part of the King's army, which feels like maybe nepotism a little bit. From this point forward, pretty much everybody in this book is like, oh yeah, the final duel is going to be between Selena and Kane. Everybody is saying that. Immediately the stakes are gone. This competition, which again has not started yet, we're still just talking about it, we're almost 100 pages in, basically doesn't matter anymore because we know who's going to make it to the end. Even if we weren't being told directly that like definitely Kane is going to make it to the end and definitely Selena is because she's the main character, Kane is the only, the only competitor that we get any meaningful interactions with or any time with it doesn't take a genius to put together that he's the one who's going to be the main like antagonizer from this point i'm like he's the bad guy whatever's happening he's behind it the competition has like officially started but they haven't had their first challenge yet we are 100 pages into the book and they're still just talking about it which is so boring i'm a quarter of the way through this book basically nothing has happened let's see she got taken from andovia the salt mines they adventured to to the palace and they've talked a lot about the competition let's get the action like god i'm ready for something to start happening and well i'm in luck because the next day some dogs show up murdered in the kennel disemboweled and dismembered and like a little bit eaten and the next day after these dogs are found one of the competitors is found dismembered and disemboweled and is bodies and ribbons oh this guy that we hadn't met yet oh he shows up dead oh that's weird so the first contest of the competition goes by the strategy that selena has is she's gonna stay like super middle of the pack which is really hard for her because she's so good at everything between these competitions there's like some indescribed period of time between each one she's just like out and about hanging out in the palace people start to think that she is one of prince dorian's girlies and so they're all really jealous of her. They all want Dorian's attention and, oh, Lillian's hogging all of the attention from this man. So the girlie who's like leading the charge, her name is Lady Caltain something or other. Lady Caltain is really, really important to the plot. I don't know who she is or why she's here. Like, I don't know who she's connected to. Selena does make one friend. Her name is Nehemia and she is the princess of Elway, which is one of the countries and or states. Still haven't figured out how to read the map yet. She doesn't speak English very well. And Selena also knows Elway from living in Andover for a while. She can speak to Nehemia in her own language, and so they're able to talk. They strike up this little friendship. Selena ends up giving Nehemia English lessons, or like the common tongue. It's English. They go through a couple competitions. People keep on popping up dead. And while all this is happening, Kaol is like, I'm a little bit in love with Selena. I think that this is supposed to be a love triangle. I really, really think that this is what Miss Sarah J. Mass was going for. Let me tell you something. I love a love triangle. I love to pick a side and then like ride or die for that. Let's recap. Team Edward in Twilight. Team Maxon in the selection. Team Kyle in the second half of the selection. This is not a love triangle. They have the chemistry of oil and water trying to mix, if we're being honest. Kaol and Selena have no chemistry. And also, Dorian kind of sucks. I have no reason to root for anybody. It's not fun to like one of these guys. They all feel like cardboard cutouts of people. I'm not, like, invested in any of these relationships. But Kaol and Selena are supposedly falling in love. We get, like, a scene of Kaol and Selena being, like, flirting or whatever. And then we cut to Dorian's perspective. Now, Dorian is hanging out with his mom. His mom is like, you really gotta find someone to get married. And he's like, what if I don't want to? And she's like, well, girl, you have to. And he's like, no. We jump to so many, so many different perspectives in this book. Selena. Kaol, Dorian, Lady Caltain, and Duke Parrington. It's too many. Two is my max. If something happens outside of these two perspectives, we as the audience 
can learn about it as the characters learn about it. We were jumping around too much. And I also didn't get emotionally invested in any of them because I was like dividing my attention between so many different brains. So we learned that Dorian has to marry somebody, but he doesn't want to marry anybody. And then we cut to, again, Selena's perspective. And Selena is like, he was so attractive that she had difficulty not thinking about how attractive he was and again wondered why he wasn't married. She sort of wanted to kiss him. Okay, good for you, girl. Congratulations. I literally cannot make myself care about either of our love interest options. I don't even know if Kayal is supposed to be a love interest. Maybe they're, he's just supposed to be like a good friend. So you remember Lady Caltain? She is also in love with Dorian. He is not giving her any attention. She's getting really, really jealous of Lillian, who's actually Selena. Lady Caltain is having some like weird affair, maybe with Duke Parrington. And also she is uh, addicted to drugs. A couple more contests are going by. More and more contestants are showing up dead and dismembered. One day, Selena is in her room. She finds a secret door. Selena leaned her shoulder into the slab of stone. It gave a little and her heart jumped. She pushed it again, the candle flickering in her hand. The door groaned as it moved slightly. Grunting, she shoved and it finally swung open. Selena is apparently, allegedly, a super famous, well-known assassin. I feel that part of that would be she's like really aware of her surroundings surely she would have checked before like now it's like a couple weeks or perhaps months into the competition there's no way to know someone must have a schematic plan of the palace and must know where all of these secret doors are why would they leave her alone in this room if they knew there was a secret door she crawls through the secret passageway she finds out there's a place to escape but for some reason she's like oh like i'm in too deep now like if i just win the competition which i will i can just like serve for four years and then have my freedom like what's the point in escaping now when i'll be on the run forever <laughs> which is such a questionable decision but so she's climbing through this passageway. she finds the escape route she decides not to escape for some god awful reason and then she finds a spot where she can see into like the banquet room and there's a little party going on. She can see Dorian dancing with some other girly. She spotted the crown prince dancing and laughing with some blonde idiot. She wanted to hate him for refusing to invite her. She was his champion after all, but she had difficulty not staring at him. While he might be a Havillard, he was dot dot dot. Well, she still very much wanted to kiss him. I can't deal with this anymore she decides she should go back to her room like in case someone checks on her so she comes back to the secret passageways she gets back in bed guess who shows up to her room kl westfall ladies and gentlemen captain of the goddamn guard shows up he gives her like a little ring and it was one of the party favors from the party kl leaves and selena has a sassy little dream and in her dream she's back in the walls she's back in this secret passageway she finds herself in this tomb there's like a sarcophagus and it's the tomb of the first queen or one of the early queens of Adderlin, queen elena and she's also an elf or a fairy fae maybe she's some magical creature who's also a person the moonlight fell upon her face, and Selena's hand trembled as she reached out and touched the smooth, youthful cheek. A mark was faintly carved into the surface, practically invisible to the eye. She traced it with her finger and traced it again. A diamond, two arrows piercing its side, and a vertical line through the middle. So she's hanging out in this tomb, and suddenly the ghost of the queen is there, and she's like, Ooh, I'm a ghost! You must listen to me when I tell you. Nothing is a coincidence. Everything has a purpose. You are meant to come to this castle just as you are meant to be an assassin to learn the skills necessary for survival. Something evil dwells in this castle. Something wicked enough to make the stars quake. Its malice echoes into all worlds. You must stop it. Forget your friendships. Forget your debts and oaths. Destroy it before it's too late. Finally, something is happening. We're getting a mission or something to do. We finally got some plot happening. Albeit almost 200 pages into the book. Nearly halfway through. Before the ghost of Elena leaves. Mind you, this is all still happening in a dream. She gives Selena her amulet and then she leaves and then selena wakes up in her hand is 
the amulet spooky the next morning another champion shows up all disemboweled and dead selena i don't know how but i think she manages to like sneak and get a look at the body there's like weird marks all around the body and she's like what are these apparently they're called word marks w y r d she's like trying to read and learn what these marks mean but she can't find anything that day she's telling nahemia about the dead body nahemia is like really interested in it nahemia's asking all these questions questions. Selena is like, that's not normal. I haven't really mentioned it up to this point. Um, but yes, all of the bodies that have been found dead and dismembered have these marks around them. They're called word marks. No one really knows what they mean. <laughs> I sure as hell don't know what they are. That mark that was described in Elena's tomb is also a word mark. Selena and Nahimi are talking about this. And then Kane, remember Kane, the big scary dude, one of the champions, he starts antagonizing Selena. He's like, come on, hit me. Hit me with all the rage you feel every time you force yourself to miss the bullseye or when you slow yourself down so you don't scale walls as fast as me. Hit me, Lillian, he whispered so only she could hear. And let's see what a year in Endovir has really taught you. So it turns out Kane knows who Selena really is. Also, an important thing to note, Kane has been getting bigger and scarier this entire time. Something about the training is really paying off because he's like bulking up. I feel like when it was revealed that Kane actually knows who she is, I feel like that was supposed to be like a like a really big moment. So much apathy. I felt so, so much apathy. Because I don't give a shit. You would think after the, oh, there's evil in the castle, you should stop it. Selena would like have some agency. She'd actually be doing stuff. She decided that she was just going to focus on finishing this competition. And then she would figure out what's going on. Newsflash, the competition is so boring. Yeah, people are showing up dead and like occasionally people die during the events, but like, I don't care. She has this mission given to her by a ghost that she decided to not look at. The extent of her research is reading in books, which as much as I do love reading, it's not super exciting to read about someone reading about stuff. One night, Dorian comes in. I can't even, I can't even make this shit up. They play flirtatious billiards, flirty pool in a fantasy novel. Really? We're playing flirtatious billiards? Okay, sure. You can do whatever you want. I'm just along for the ride. Not only are they like flirtatiously playing billiards, he legitimately pulls the, oh, hey, you're not doing that right. Let me show you. And, and like holds the, the pool cue like behind her. Though it was the oldest and most shameless trick in the book, he reached over her and put his hand on top of the one that gripped the cue. He then positioned the fingers of the other hand on the wood before lightly gripping her wrist. That gives me the ick so hard. And for why? But like, really? Really? The like, showing her how to shoot pool? What the fuck? This is made up and you included that? Oh girl, Sarah J Mass, you gotta pay for your crimes against humanity. This is not cool. And my camera's dying. It's a new day. Also, I'm wearing the same shirt, but uh, nobody cares. Who am I trying to impress? You? You don't care. Lady Kelton is a drug addict. And she's, I think, addicted to opium. Let me Google. Is opium heroin? Heroin is a synthetic substance that uses opium and is, as its primary active ingredient. Okay, okay. She's a heroin addict. I was a heroin addict. Great. So Lady Calton is a heroin addict, I guess. She takes a lot of opium and she has like headaches and she gets super foggy or whatever. That's upsetting for her. I'm so sorry, Queen. Hope you get some help. Dorian and Selena have like another romantic intimate moment. Basically, Selena is like, why aren't you married? And Dorian is like, because uh, I don't want to be. And she's like, yeah, but why? And he's like, girl, I'm 19. I'm way too young to be married. And he's like, I'm not married because I can't stomach the idea of marrying a woman inferior to me in mind and spirit. It would mean the death of my soul. I mean, that's really fair. Like, if you want to marry for love, like, marry for love, I don't care. But then Selena is like, marriage is a legal contract. It's not a sacred thing. As the crown prince, you should have given up such fanciful notions. And you know what? She's so real for that. Because marriage is just a piece of paper. I'm not anti-marriage. If you want to get married, I love that for you. 
you. I don't really get marriage. I get it for like the legal benefits. It just seems so frivolous to me. So the ghost of Elena shows up at the foot of Selena's bed again and like gives her some really cryptic advice. She's like, the answers you seek are on the right. Look to your right. You'll find answers there. You don't trust me yet. I understand. But you and I are on the same side whether you allow yourself to believe it or not. She lowered her gaze to the assassin, pinning her eyes with the intensity of it. I came here to warn you to keep an eye on your right. Literally the next day after this like weird ghost encounter, there's another test. And this one is a poison challenge. There is like, I think 10 different cups. Each has a different poison in it, which is like a different strength of poison. The challenge is you have to order the poisons from least poisonous to most poisonous, but that's boring. So to raise the stakes, you have to drink the poison that you think is the least poisonous. If you're wrong, you could die. And if you're right, like basically nothing will happen. Selena, she orders her poison and she thinks she's pretty right, but there's two left. There's one that is like clear liquid. It looks like water and it doesn't smell like anything. And there's one that looks like red wine. And she's like, I don't know which is which. On one hand, it's really hard to hide a poison in water without changing the color or the odor. The water doesn't look like it's changed, so maybe it's just water. On the other hand, this red wine, it's really easy to hide stuff in red wine. So maybe they hid something super poisonous in this and they're banking on us thinking it's just red wine. On the right side of her is uh, some guy who's like an expert in poisons. And she looks over and she sees that he put the red wine first and the water last. So the red wine, least poisonous, water, most poisonous. And she's like, okay, Slay, I'm gonna do that. And then she's like, wait a second. That's what the little ghost was talking about last night. She said, look to your right. The answers are on your right. This guy's on my right. He has the answers. My dumb ass would never have made that connection. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but I would not be sitting there like in essentially what is a life or death situation being like, oh yeah. So the ghost last night said that the answers would be to my right and he's on my right. So he must have the answers. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but like, I would never go there. I'd be like, oh, what a silly coincidence. Like she said, look to the right and this guy's on my right. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, this is what she was talking about ever. So turns out she got it right. Or I think she maybe got one wrong. She drinks the red wine looking thing. Turns out it's just red wine. We jump perspectives again. There are too many perspectives in this book. Pick two. I can handle two. Any more than that, I get confused. But we jump to Lady Caltane POV, and she's really, really jealous of Lady Lillian, who remember is actually Selena. She's like, I gotta, I gotta find a way to like undermine her. I'm going to spread a rumor about her. And the rumor I'm going to spread about her is that she is not who she says he, she is. Random guess. She's just m spreading a rumor. She's not, there's no basis to this claim. But she's like absolutely right. Lady Lillian is not who she says she is. It's Selena. But also she doesn't know that. She's just being a bitch. And she so happened to spread the right rumor. Absolutely iconic. The next day or maybe the same day. I don't know. Time has no meaning here. Selena is on her period. Like when she was in Endovir. Her periods went away because she was so malnourished and brutalized. But they're back. Miss Sarah J. Mass, I have a question for you. Why? 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 Is this relevant? No. Her weight gain over the past three and a half months had a three and a half months. Three and a half months? Her weight gain over the past three and a half months had allowed for her monthly cycles to return after the near starvation in Endovir had made them vanish. I don't care. We all know that grown people with uteruses get periods. We don't need you to tell us. And this is a fantasy book. Like, I don't want to think about like, oh, she's, she's on her period right now. I don't, I don't give a shit. We had to hear that she's on her period because we need to see how the boys react to it. So when she tells Kayal that she's on her period, but she doesn't say that, she's like, I'm not feeling well, I'm really not feeling well, because when my monthly cycles are back, he's like, Ugh, oh, oh, sorry, let me, oh, God, bye. And he gets all, like, flustered and leaves. And then Dorian comes in, he's like, Kayal told me what's wrong, and he's, like, fine with it, because he's a feminist or whatever. Is this supposed to, like, endear one of them to me? Is this supposed to make me like Dorian more, because it's not working? In this scene, Kayal just laughed because he was like, oh, no, she's on her period, I can't deal with that. Dorian comes in, he's like, okay, I'll tell me what's wrong, like, don't worry about it, queen. So she's, like, lying in bed all feeling all sorry for herself because she's on her period. I'm like, girl, suck it up. I have no empathy for this because I also, I have really bad periods. I get really bad cramps, so to the point where, like, sometimes I'll be going about my day and I will double over in pain, which is not healthy. I know that. I still have to go to work. I still have to go to school. I still have to live my life. Dorian is hanging out, which Dorian is such as the more I say the name Dorian, the more I hate the name Dorian. He's like, I guess, like sitting on her bed and he picks up the book that she's reading and it's erotica, which like great. Good for you. Pop off. But like, again, was this important? Dorian looked down at the book. 
This isn't one of the books I sent you. I don't even own books like these. Of course you don't, Dorian. I had the maid send for a copy today. Sunset's Passion, he read, and opened the book to a random page to read aloud. His hand... <laughs> His hands gently caressed her ivory, silky, brr. His eyes widened. She's reading smut. Which again, power to ya, but I'm not sure why it's, um, why is this necessary? Is this necessary? Because I don't think so. Dorian is like complaining about how he just has to go to this ball for Yulmus. And Selena really wants to go, but she can't go. She's not allowed to go. Even though some of the other champions are allowed to go, I guess she's like too dangerous for that. Selena stared at the moonlight as it streamed across the ceiling. A masked ball on Yulmus. Even if it was the most corrupt and ostentatious court in Aurelia, it sounded dreadfully romantic. And of course she wasn't allowed to go. And then when Selena goes to bed that night, she looks under her bed and she notices there's a whole bunch of these like magical word marks drawn in chalk under her bed. Now, if you think back to earlier in the book, every single one of the dead bodies has had word marks around it. Selena panics. Selena's like, I'm getting murdered next. So she washes away all the word marks and she pieces out. She goes to the library because she's like, I can't be in my room. I'm about to get murdered. In the library, she runs into Nehemia, the princess of Elway. Nehemia is reading like this really chunky book like in English or in the common tongue which is a supposedly a language that Nehemia does not speak or read in remember Selena is giving her English lessons Selena's like I'm not even speak English how are you reading this book and Nehemia goes then you're like every ignorant fool in this castle Lillian she said with perfect pronunciation in the common tongue okay but like here's my question it's not like she was like mean about it. She's been giving you English lessons because you've been pretending not to speak English like if it was just that she was speaking in an accent and then Selena came up to her and was like, God, I, th I thought you can, I thought you can't read in this language. Like, yeah, then that's being ignorant. But she was actively pretending not to know the language very well. That's because that means you were lying to her. You were lying to her, right? Am I, cra am I crazy? Like, but Selena is like, if Nehemia is lying about speaking English, what else could she be lying about? And then Selena decides that Nehemia is definitely the one who's been murdering all of the champions. Nehemia had every reason to deceive them, to plot against them, to tear apart this stupid competition and send everyone into a tizzy. Who better to target than the criminals living here? No one would miss them, but fear would seep deep into the castle. The mental gymnastics it must have taken to get to this conclusion. She lied about one thing. She lied about speaking English. And you're like, oh my god, she's also murdering everybody. That's not, like, how did you get from point A to point B? I'm just curious. Whatever. A couple days go by. It's the Yule Miss Masked Ball. And Dorian gives Selena a little present. He gives her like a bag of candy and also a whole dog, like a puppy. Selena is like, I have to go to the ball because at the ball, Nehemia is going to murder everybody. To get from Nehemia is lying about speaking English to she's murdering everybody. Point A to point B, like whatever. Okay, fine. I will accept that. But to get from point A to point B to point C that she is going to commit mass murder at this ball with no, like, no evidence to support that. She's lying about speaking English. Oh my God, she's a murderer. Oh my God, she's going to commit mass murder. The person who has been murdering the people in the castle has not been targeting nobility, has not been committing mass murder, has only been murdering at night when the people are alone. And like, maybe I watch too much Criminal Minds, that's entirely possible, but it doesn't fit. Someone who's committing isolated attacks on a specific group of people is not gonna all of a sudden, with no warning, do mass murder to a completely different group of people. But you can't tell Selena that. She is convinced that she has to save everybody. And so she dresses up really fancy and she puts on a mask and she goes to the ball. So she gets to the ball. She sees Nehemia talking to the queen and she's like, oh my gosh, wait, JK, never mind. She's absolutely not here to commit mass murder. Why did you change your mind so fast? An hour later, Selena was beginning to curse herself for being a fool. Nehemia was still sitting with the queen and hadn't looked in Selena's direction. How could she have considered that Nehemia, Nehemia of all people, would attack everyone? You're flip-flopping, girl. Pick a lane and stick to it, please. I'm begging you. Dorian, remember Dorian the prince, whatever. He, like, sweeps her away from Kaol and they start dancing. And they dance together all evening. So we switch to another perspective real quick so we can get this interaction. Kale watched Dorian dip Selena, watched the way her lips widened into a smile and her eyes burst with light as Crown Prince said something. Is he with her? Otho asked. The Lady Lillian belongs to herself and no one else. Otho shrugged. That's strange because it looks like he's in love with her, he said and walked away. Let's play a little trivia game. Why did this sentence make Ainsley mad? Dorian's expression was full of something. Joy? Wonder? 
His shoulders were straight, his back erect. He looked like a man, like a king. Have you figured out why I'm mad? Never use the word erect. There are so many other words to use before the word erect. Actually, you know what? We're gonna Google synonyms. Synonyms for erect, okay? Erect, synonyms. Engorged, enlarged, swollen, hard, rigid, stiff, firm. I did, I did this to myself. Anyway, so all that to say, never, ever, ever use the word erect for anything. For anything. Never. If I have to read the word erect, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm back. So Selena goes back to her room. Dorian comes up. They kiss. It's like a big deal or whatever. I'm impressed you got up here so quickly and without a pack of court ladies hounding after you. Perhaps you should try your hand at being an assassin. He shook the hair out of his face. I'm not interested in court ladies, he said thickly and kissed her. Ugh. I, fuck you his mouth was warm and his lips were smooth and selena lost all sense of time and place as she slowly kissed him back gross so the next day lady caltain and duke parrington are conspiring duke parrington tells her lady lillian is not lady lillian she's actually selena sardothian the outer one assassin lady caltain is like oh my gosh <laughs> i can do something with this telling everybody is not enough i have to like cause problems this is how she's going to get dorian to fall in love with her which a crucial piece of information that duke parrington left out is that dorian knows that selena is selena you're not dropping a bombshell here he already knows and he likes her so if you interfere with her bullshit this is gonna reflect poorly on you and he's still gonna like her so the duke is like I was going to ask you to preside over the toast as a representation of the goddess. Perhaps you could slip something into her drink. Kill her myself? Hiring someone was one thing, but to do it herself. The duke raised his hand. No, no, but the king has agreed some drastic measures should be taken in a way that will make Dorian believe things were an accident. If you were to merely give her a dose of bloodbane, not lethal, but just enough to cause her to lose control, it would give Cain the advantage he needs. So what are we learning here? We're learning that... First of all, Cain doesn't think he can win by himself. Second of all, we're learning that the king is in on this whole conspiracy, at least a little bit. Like, Lady Caltain is going to try to poison her right before the final duel. We switch back to Selena's point of view, and she's reading a book on word marks, and she comes across this passage. It says, For sacrifices to the Ridderac, using the victim's blood, mark the area around it accordingly. Once the creature has been summoned, these marks will guide the exchange. For the flesh of the sacrifice, the beast will grant you the victim's strength. Hmm, wait a second. How do we know who's been getting stronger and stronger as this competition has been progressing and as people have been dying? Maybe is it Cain? Oh, I don't know. I, I wonder. I wonder who it could be. That night, for some reason, she decides to take a little adventure down into her secret passageways again. And she opens the little door and she goes down and she sees some footsteps. And so she follows the footsteps. She sees like a figure hunched over and he's like muttering to himself. Turns out it's Kane. <laughs> who called it? Me. Ding, ding, ding. Gold star for Ainsley. Yeah. So the reason why Kane has been getting stronger and stronger throughout the competition is because he's been stealing the strength of the victims that he's killed. Kane summons the Ritterack. I don't remember if Cain murdered somebody and that was how he summoned the Ritterack, which would make the most sense to me, but there was no body down there, I don't think. I think he was trying to murder somebody, but like you need to have already have murdered them to summon the Ritterack. He so he summons the Ritterack somehow for some in some way. It comes and like tries to murder Selena and she has no chance against this magical thing. It's like a weird, it's like a skinwalker, skin crawler, whatever they're called. And so she's like, the tomb of Elena must be coming to me in my dream for some reason. So she scurries, she's running away from the Ritterack and she runs into the tomb. And in the tomb, there's a, a super fancy sword. It's like the sword in the stone, but it's called the, um, it's called the Dam Damaris. And so she like takes this tomb and she stabs the Ritterack in the face and it died. But not before it like bit into her and like seriously injured her. So she's like bleeding out on the floor. Nehemia comes down, picks her up, brings her back upstairs into her room, like bandages her up and brings her to the bath. There are word marks glowing on Selena's arm. Selena wakes up the next day. She's healed by magic, which is a good thing because the championship duel is coming right up. She does not have time to make like a full medical recovery. She explains to Nehemia the whole thing. She explains that she is not actually Lady Lillian. Her name is Selena. She's the Adderlin assassin. But Nehemia's like, since you have so many different names, I want to give you one. You bear many names, and so I shall name you as well. I name you Alentia. I give you this name to use with honor, to use when the other names grow too heavy. I name you Alentia, 
spirit that could not be broken. And now it is time for the final competition. Now, the only way I can describe this in like layman's terms, it's like, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race lip sync for the crown. There's four finalists, two of them duel each other, and then the winners each duel the winners, right? Kane is paired with one person, Selena is paired with the other person. Their duels don't matter because we know who's gonna win. Kane does his little duel, it goes fine. Selena goes next, obviously she also wins, and then it's time for their duel together. So right before the final duel, there's like a toast to the goddess, they drink wine. Now remember, Lady Caltaine and Duke Parrington's plan, Lady Caltaine put a little bit of, a little bit of poison in Selena's cup, so Selena drinks it, immediately goes into the duel. So not only is she tired because she just had her duel, but now she is poisoned. Everyone can tell that something is wrong, but they can't step in because that would disqualify her and then Kane would win by default. So they just have to like let it happen. For some reason, the poison mixed with like her magical blood and it's causing her to see ghosts. So she's like sitting like on the ground, like thrashing, seeing these ghosts that I guess Kane has summoned because he can also see them, but he doesn't have magical blood. Or maybe he does. I don't know. But no one else can see them. So they're just like, wow, she is going crazy. She is nuts. It's bad. She's doing horribly. She looks over and she sees Nehemia making like little word marks in the air, like drawing little word marks with her fingers in the air to like protect her. Queen Elena shows up and is like, I will protect you. And she like puts a force field around her so none of the ghosts can get to her. And she's like, I will, I'll suck the poison out of you. But like after the poison is gone, you won't be able to see me because like the poison is what opened her third eye or whatever the fuck so after she gets healed from the poison selena wins slay so she's like talking to i guess dorian or someone and then the king gives a little sneaky a little sneaky signal to kane to try to kill her but kaol sees this about to happen he steps in front of her stabs kane kane dies Kale murdered him. As much as I would like this book to be over, there are some loose ends we have to tie up. We'll speed run them, okay? Dorian professes his love to Selena and Selena breaks up with him. She goes, I can't be with you if I'm the king's champion. And he goes, of course you can. We'll have to keep it a secret. But she goes, no, I have enough secrets. I don't need another one. Lady Calting gets sent to jail. Plot twist. Turns out the king knows all all about the word marks and he's been pulling the strings in the back this entire time this was a two-pronged experiment the first part was kane to see if kane could open the portal and use the ritter act to kill people the second part of the experiment was lady caltaine to see if they could uh, use the word marks to influence someone's behavior ghost elena visits one more time selena's like thank you for saving my life ellen bowed her head Blood ties can't be broken, she whispered, and then vanished, her words echoing in the silent tomb. Dorian is the crown prince. Elena is a former queen. One would assume that the monarchy is like um, a familial lineage. Elena is like great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents to Dorian, right? But the ghost was just said blood ties can't be broken to Selena, which makes me think that like maybe she's got some, they've got some blood in common. If Elena and Selena are related and Elena and Dorian are related, that means... Selena and Dorian are related, and that would be incest. And if it's not incest, it's incest adjacent. Anyway, the book ends with Selena signing her contract to be the king's assassin. The king says to her that if she doesn't do what he says, he's gonna kill Kaol and Nehemia and everyone that she loves, and then the end. This, this video has taken three days to film, and so I've had a lot of time to think about this book. I'm going to tell you why I didn't like it. This was 400 pages of exposition. To some extent, the first book in a series has to do that, but it shouldn't feel like it's doing that. I saw this video that said, like, this is a really good series, but the first two books are kind of boring. I'm not suffering through two, four, 100 page books, 800 pages of exposition for it to start getting good. I'm not gonna finish the series unless I get a lot of peer pressure to. Like, unless someone is like, no, you have to, it does get good. I'm not gonna finish the series, which is big, big for me. Uh, saying it out loud, I feel like I'm gonna sound crazy, but if I don't finish a book or if I don't finish a series, I feel lopsided. I feel like the books need to live together in my brain. And if I've only read one of them, then it's lonely up there. It takes a lot for me to not want to finish a series. Like I'm, I'm an all or nothing girly, truly. We don't know who the author of Harry Potter is, which is so silly, but like that is a series. It, I think it was always intended to be a series, but the first book holds up on its own. Each individual book stands alone as its own work of fiction. This was exposition. Chances are I will not be reading the rest of the Throne of Glass series. Also, there's like so many books in this series. The books are long, the series is long, and I just don't have the time. That is this. Some kind soul suggested that I read the after series after this. Um, so I will think about that. I'm only one person, and while I have very strong opinions on books, 
I would love to know if perhaps you also have a strong opinion on a book that you think I would also have a strong opinion on. I put a Google form in the, descri the description box if you want to like, send me a suggestion. Slay. Bye-bye.